Well, good evening, LCM. Tonight is July 29th, 2020. What an amazing time we have had diving into the depths of God's Word. Bringing out some treasures to the surface that lie within it. Last Sunday, your pastors directed you to do a double take. You take a... Yeah, you do take a double take. Take a stand, and then you take... So again, you take a... And you take... All right. How many of you guys put this into practice since last Sunday? Yep. Were you blessed by it? Were you doubly blessed by it? Oh, amen. Look, church, two nights ago, our Monday night foundations teaching was overwhelmingly rich. If you consistently choose not to be here on a Monday night because you think you got better things to do, I promise you, you don't. I promise you, uh, catching up on the latest Netflix uh, show is not as good as what we have going on here. There was a title that we entitled Monday night. It was called Original Standard Extraordinary Expansion. That the, the, ordin, the original standard given from the, was the heavenly pattern. And it's never obsolete. It's never archaic. It's never in need of abrogation. See, but the extraordinary expansion that takes place is nothing short of supernatural. Yeah. What does that mean? That means when you're looking at the tabernacle, the original design from heaven, that the temple was simply an extraordinary expansion of this. That Israel, God's pattern from the heavens was extraordinarily expanded to include you and me, the Gentiles. See, if you weren't here on Monday, you need to do the necessary work. Somebody say, necessary work. Necessary work. To get the recording and actually study it. Don't just listen to it, study it. Mm. They reminded us then that we have to prove faithful. We must be workers. We must be servants. We must be sons that prove faithful to the discipleship, to the house that God has put you in. Faithful to the original standard. Man, we all like the thought of new wine, but nobody tastes the new wine and says that it's better than the old. We have to start with the old, and then you can add the new. See, heavenly designs never have to be redesigned. They're only extraordinarily expanded to take place in our lives. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Look, church, these concepts so move the hearts of your pastors that we had to carry on at least one major theme from Monday night. That leads us to what we're going to talk about tonight. Are you ready? Yeah. Hey, and what a, t- what a night it's going to be tonight. I mean, it's going to be good. No, wait, hold on, not good. It's going to be great. Amen. In fact, the title of tonight's sermon is Swallowed Up Resurrection Power on Display. So say, or go to Exodus chapter 7 and say swallowed up whenever you get there. Amen. We will look at verse 10. Come on, Alexander. Woo! So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded. Obedient sons. Aaron threw down his staff in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. Pharaoh then summoned wise men and sorcerers, and the Egyptian magicians also did the same things by their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff, and it became a snake. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Oh, I think we see some here. Well, this first begins with Moses and Aaron doing just as the Lord commanded. It's almost like they took their stand and took action. And they were facing the ruler of Egypt, facing Pharaoh. In order to do that, they had to be free of fear in order to deliver God's people, to see God's promises come true. You got to be free of fear. Write that down. Put it in your heart. They had to put their trust in God's power, God's authority, that mata, that staff that God put inside of their hands, and then act upon that staff that was in their hands. See, they had no fear of failure when Egypt's elite seemed to replicate God's righteous standard, right? Aaron threw down his staff. The magicians and sorcerers threw down theirs. They both became snakes. How do you know which one's right in that scenario? Come on, whenever Egypt, whenever the world is able to replicate on the surface the God's righteous standards, how do you know which one's right? See, you're not the only one with the results is what the world would say. 
Look, I got some results too. Look, I implemented this 10 step, 12 step, 40 step program. I'm able to get people rehab. Oh, but give it just a little bit of time. See, before returning to Egypt, Moses and Aaron were swallowed up in resurrection power. They were filled with a trust that Yahweh was able to swallow up their replicated form of righteousness that was truly just a staff of sin and death, hollow holiness, fake fruit. See, church, when you stand on what God's authority is in his word and you act upon it, their false replica of righteousness is going to be swallowed up by God's righteous standard. Yeah, Give it enough time and your marriage over decades that has produced disciples and fruit will outlast, outshine, and outproduce every other marriage that has been outside a covenant with God. On, I've had family members look at me and to determine that I am in a cult. That the authority that you walk around with is, is completely opposite of what God has ordained. And over the course of time, my marriage and my, my life has produced nothing but righteous fruit. And those same family members that were calling me a, a cult leader or cult member are now coming to me for counsel on how to put their marriages back together. See, the standard of God's word in your hand is far superior to any wisdom or accomplishment this world would ever challenge you with. When God's standard is in your hands, you can be free of fear. Say free of fear. Free of fear. You can be swallowed up in resurrection power. Say swallowed up in resurrection power. Swallowed up in resurrection power. Oh, and you can walk tall and carry the staff of God in your hands with confidence. Yeah. Offering that same resurrection power to everyone you come in contact with. Come on, somebody say thank you, Pastor Matt. Thank you. Who wouldn't want to walk free from fear? Who wouldn't want to walk swaddled up, enveloped, engulfed by the very resurrection power of God? Yes. That you can walk in confidence and carry out what God has put in your life and upon you to carry out. Yeah. The idea that you can be fully trained and we're going to go on high alert yeah. and we're going to have a, a, a double, a double take of what God has for our life. You want to know how to do that? Well, half of you want to know. So those are the ones I'm going to talk to. <laughs> The key tonight is what we're giving you. Yeah. We're starting off early in the process and we're just giving it to you right here at the beginning. The key is that you have to be swallowed up in the resurrection yes. power of God. How are you going to accomplish this? We can talk to you about not walking in fear, but that doesn't help you unless you're swallowed up in the resurrection yes. power of God. Turn with me to Psalm 124. Psalm 124. You can be free of fear tonight. You can actually be free of fear tonight in every area of your life. Amen. Not just the concept, but those things that you've been even afraid to talk about. You've been afraid to address. Yeah, I got most of my life in order, Pastor. Yeah, but what about the areas that you know that you don't? Yeah. It's time for us to get swallowed up in resurrection power tonight. Psalm 124, we're going to begin in verse 1. Somebody say swallowed up when you're there. Swallowed up. If the Lord had not been on our side... Let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side, can I get a witness in this house tonight? Yeah. Can anybody say along with the psalmist David, if the Lord hadn't been on my side? Come on. Come on, Elsie, and why don't you say that with me? Say that phrase with me. If the Lord had not been on our side, my God, where would you be? I surely wouldn't be here. I surely wouldn't be standing here. I surely wouldn't want to. I surely wouldn't be the one that has the compassion and the understanding to help you tonight. That's not where I'd be. I'd be somewhere else if the Lord had not been on our side. Look at verse two. When men attacked us, when their anger flared against us, they would have swallowed us alive. The floor would have been engulfed. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Can anybody relate to this passage tonight? Yes. A song that's reminding you, man, if the Lord hadn't been with us, we'd have gotten taken out a long time ago. We would have been overwhelmed a long time ago. Yeah. We'd have been swept away a long time ago. When men attacked us, when anger flared against us, when opposition and adversity began to engulf us. See, these things would have done us in. They would have swallowed us. They would have consumed us and moved on, and we would not have existed. Mm. Church, fear tries to swallow you. Yeah. 
Fear tries to swallow you. Oh, pastor, I'm not even sure if I can get started because I'm pretty sure I'm going to fail. Fear that's trying to swallow you. Yeah. Pastor, I'm not sure that I can meet the actual standard that you guys are setting. You're setting a bar that's, I think it's just too high, and I'm afraid that I can't meet it. So I, the fear is starting to engulf me. It's starting to sweep over me. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to push against that standard. I'm going to push against the people. Why? Because you're afraid. Yeah. I'm not going to ask this question. I'm going to make it as a statement so you get to stay quiet for another minute. Wives, when your husbands are setting a standard and you don't think you can get to it. Families, an LCM standard that just feels too high. You love it around you, but you're not sure that you can do it. That's fear trying to engulf you. Yeah. Oh, I love these guys. Yeah, but there's a fear that's trying to engulf you. What about having a fear that your provision is going to run out? Mm. You have fear that when the until the provision gets there, then the provision gets there, then you're afraid it's going to run out. And then it, when, it, when it doesn't run out, you're going to find some other fear because it's always trying to swallow you. Yeah. But we never perceive that. God has helped us every single time. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging Amen. for bread. And it happens, and he saves us every time, all the time, and we're still afraid. Come on. That's not reason. That's not reasonable. That's fear trying to swallow you. Yeah. How many people in this house, for those watching, God bless you, but I'm talking to our family. You're afraid. You're afraid you can't do it. You're afraid you can't live up to what we're doing. So you walk around in fear. You know, the only thing that will keep you from becoming who we are is for you to be swallowed up by fear. Fear that you won't have revelation when you need it. Fear that you're not going to get X, Y, or Z. And no matter how many times God provides exactly what you need, you don't quite get it because fear is trying to swallow you. Am I talking to you? Yeah. There's not a man or woman in this room that is free from what I'm saying to you. When you're winning, you still know that fear is trying to swallow you. See, but the Lord is on our side. Somebody amen. say amen. amen. If the Lord hadn't been on our side, you would have gotten swallowed by fear. Yeah. But see, that's not the case tonight. You're at LCM. You have more than a lifeline. You have the throne room of heaven that is available to amen. you. Changing who you are. Transforming you from the inside out. We've not been swallowed up by fear. We've not been swallowed up by adversity because you're still here. Amen. You've been swallowed up in resurrection power. Now we're just going to learn how to walk in it tonight. This allows for us to have full confidence. Somebody say full confidence. Full confidence. I know you just like you know me. We need to be a church that is walking in swallowed up by the fullness of the resurrection power so we can actually have confidence when we go forward. Let's continue to read in Psalm 124. Amen. Praise be to the Lord. Amen. That's the way that you should be feeling in this moment. After you've realized that men have tried to come against you and their anger flared and the floods try to sweep you away and you're still standing here. You're still here. Yeah. You're still going forward. You still love the Lord. You still have fight in you. Amen. Praise be to the Lord our God. Amen. Who has not let us be torn by the teeth of the enemy. We have escaped like a bird out of the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you hear the confidence of this writer? If the Lord hadn't been with us, we'd have been in real trouble. But the Lord is with us and so we're going to walk in confidence. We can have praises in the midst of difficulty because we have escaped. We have the chains broken off of our lives. Yes. We have been set free. Somebody Amen. say swallowed up. Swallowed up. Look at verse 8. Our help. Our easer. Yeah. 
is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Our help that easier from the heavens that we've been swallowed up in the Hashem, the name, the character, Come reputation, yeah. body of work of the maker of heaven, the one who resurrects the dead as part of his innate character. Yeah. You cannot separate the resurrection power from him. Your only hope, your only chance is what's happening here tonight and for you to be swallowed up Amen. in resurrection power. That's going to make you free from fear. Amen. Listen to me, church. You have to be set free from fear tonight. Amen. You can't keep walking in it, especially if you know it. Especially if I'm going through a list and it's not to meant to be exhaustive, just illustrative. I, I'm not hitting every one of them. I know that. But I'm hitting enough that you should hear it resonate within your soul. You should hear it that the God is putting his finger on what your fear is. See, when we do that, we're free from fear as we are swallowed up in the resurrection power. And then we're able to walk in full confidence. Amen. We're able to walk ahead. We're able to hear what God has been saying to us and put it into practice through His resurrection power engulfing us, surrounding us, sweeping over us, yeah. and swallowing us up in that resurrection power. Yeah. Somebody say swallowed up. Swallowed up. Turn with me to Jonah chapter 1. We're going to get swallowed up tonight. In this house, what God is doing in our midst right now is that resurrection power is swallowing up your fear. This is a house where cowards are turned into courageous. Yes. This is a house where the fearful become forceful. That's right. This is life-changing ministries where we are transformed from being swallowed up by fear and we swallowed up fear through resurrection power. Amen. Jonah chapter 1 verse 17. But the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. What? Where did this great fish come from? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. Oh, we begin to see something beautiful revisiting a very, very well-known story. You know what God actually provided in that great fish? Repentance. A repentance that led to resurrection power. By allowing that fish to swallow him up, it got Jonah's attention. We're all very familiar with this, but let me, let me put it on a more personal note. Years ago, some like seven years ago, two months and three days, an approximate measure, I began to long to go in a direction of buying a vehicle that God didn't want me to go. He was pointing me in another direction. I had this wonderful Honda Civic for a big guy, that's a great car to have. It made me feel very special every time I went to go help somebody move. Two boxes and a TV, that's all I could carry. That I wanted something that was a bit larger. That was blue. It was uh, you know, full-size bed. Had four by four capabilities. Diesel engine, shook windows when you drove by. So I began to reason in a ministerial fashion of how I could bless somebody with my Honda Civic, because it would be a blessing, and look for a means of financing of getting me a truck that would match those criteria. Well, I was denied by every lender that was out there. But my own arm began to work my own salvation. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is the Lord. This is the avenue that God's going to provide. I mean, this civic's going to bless this person, and this person's blessing me that I can pay them back. And I'll, oh, yeah, amen. And it's completely not what God told me to do. Well, I got swallowed, literally. I got swallowed by this truck. This big, beautiful, blue Ford F-350 uh -huh. with a six-point no-go engine. just so happened to have its hood open about every other week or every week and i was literally swallowed inside of that engine making constant repairs that i was swallowed by my own carnal selfish pursuit 
But it caused me to do something. It caused me to cry out. I started with a crying out of, Lord, help me fix this engine. And when that really didn't work, Lord, help me pay for the repairs to fix this engine. When all my money ran out, everything was exhausted. I realized I actually had to start repenting. I wish it was only three days and three nights, Pastor, that I spent in that truck. It was more like 300 days and 300 nights. I began to see that fear was the root of my issue. Fear that I wouldn't be able to obtain what I really wanted and needed for ministry. And that fear led to something that was very crucial and detrimental that God was trying to overcome inside of me. And that was pride. I held on to that truck for two and a half years. And I was clinging to every ounce of pride showing that I made a good decision. Cassidy, I heard from God. I know that God will come through. Every time that we have a need of ministry, I was inside of that truck. And it was evident that I was holding on to a deep level of pride that was the fruit of my initial fear. I didn't want to repent. Can anybody sympathize with Pastor Matthew here? Anybody ever held on to something because you were just too afraid to let it go? You walked in pride in a way that caused more damage to what God was trying to do than if you had just humbled yourself and repented? Or is that just Pastor Matt? I know it relates to me. See, this is what we're talking to. We're talking to you tonight. We're talking to people. We're trying to keep you out of the belly of a whale, but that, that, uh, of a big fish. But if that happens, that might just be the Lord helping you to address your pride and your fear. I'll make it even more relatable. God let me begin to eat the fruit of my own pride to the point that I couldn't <clears throat> afford it. Fix or repair daily the actual Ford brand of my truck. That I paid a continual cost for my pride. I couldn't afford to keep up with it. And that drove me to a place of having to admit what I'd done, get some humility inside of me. But I had to realize that fear was forcing God to provide a great fish that would swallow me up. It's really a heart issue I was getting at the whole time. It was exactly what I needed to get my attention, root out fear, and remove the fruit of pride. I came to the point where I said, I am swallowed by this huge mistake, and I don't want to reveal it to anyone. Because if I do, I will look weak. I'll look weak to my wife. I'll look weak to my, my brothers. I'll look weak to the church. Everybody will know that I made a mistake. You know who didn't know that? I didn't know that. But everyone else did. Everyone else already knew that I had been eating the fruit of my pride and I'd made a mistake. And here's what I learned. I learned how to overcome in that situation. Having been swallowed by a great fish that was initiated by my fear, leading to the fruit of pride. I began to just humble myself. Humble myself and said, I cannot hold on to this fear and pride any longer. It's costing me shalom with God. It's costing me shalom in this ministry. Shalom in my home. It's not worth it anymore. So I'm going to let go of it and just begin to admit, hey guys, I made a huge mistake. Can you help me out? All the liberty, the freedom that was there when I brought this heap of junk to CarMax and I signed over the title. It just so happened to be I received a value back only 30% of what I paid total for the truck and the repairs. And I could have hesitated and said, yep, I'm, not, I'm not getting a good return on this. Trust me. I was at the point where I didn't care. It wasn't worth it. I don't care how much I had to lose. I knew that what I had to gain is humility and the favor of God. See, I began to get the perspective that God was providing for me an opportunity to repent and therefore become swallowed with resurrection power. You know what I drive right now? I drive a big beautiful white f-350 truck with a diesel engine and big old tires and a winch it can pull down a house and put it back up again 
I got exactly what was coming my way, but I I've tried to obtain it with my own hands ahead of its time. What we need to do is be free from fear so that we can be filled, swallowed up with resurrection power. It's on its way. Just wait. Your turn is coming. And then you can start your engine, rattle everybody's windows, and drive with confidence everywhere you go. Yeah. Well, that's not the end of where we're reading in Jonah. That's just the beginning, y'all. So chapter 2 begins in this way. From inside the fish. Jonah prayed to the Lord as God. This got my attention today. When we're going to read Jonah's prayer, I want you to keep in constant forefront of your mind. It's from the inside of this fish that he prayed this. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. Where was Jonah again when he prayed this? Inside the overwhelming situation that had swallowed him. From the depths of Sheol, I called for help, and you listened to my cry inside the fish. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said I've been banished from your sight, yet I will look again to your holy temple. Do you hear the repentance? Do you see him becoming free of fear that he is being swallowed up by resurrection power while inside the fish and he is full of confidence that he will see God's presence again? Amen. Verse 5, the engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed has wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O oh Lord my God. What we have here is a pattern of a man who cries out in desperation. In his distress, he is free from fear. He is saying from the depths, I called and you listened to my cry, having a confidence that his voice can be heard by the living God, knowing there is a hope in resurrection power that will let him stand in the temple where he can worship his God and brought his life up from the pit, having full confidence that he will be resurrected. Verse 7 continues. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Where was Jonah again? Inside the fish. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that would be theirs. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. You want to know the solution of overcoming when you feel swallowed up by overwhelming situations? You begin to worship the Lord your God with a confidence that says, I am free from fear because resurrection power is swallowing me up right now. I will have that confidence that that same resurrection power will, will swallow my circumstances. It will swallow it right up so I can walk in full confidence. And where we end in verse 10. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Sometimes we need, just need that life-changing power that puts us right where we need to be. And we stand up in that resurrection power after repenting and just go on to do what God's called us to do. See, when we are rightly repenting, we're rightly acknowledging our sin and his conquering resurrection power over it. We can be free from fear. We can be filled and swallowed up with resurrection power. We can walk around in full confidence. Here's the point, though. It's not just about you. It's not just about being swallowed up in that circumstance. God is getting you to repent to be swallowed up in resurrection power because that is what you're going to go bring to those who are truly dying and need that same resurrection power. Oh, what is it like whenever somebody sees your life going through hell and back that you're crying out to the living God that you are then free from fear. You are swallowed up by resurrection power. You're walking around in full confidence. You hold your head up high. They say, I want what you have. That's eternal. That's overcoming. That's victory. You have to tell me about this Jesus that you serve because I want the same resurrection power that you have. Church, where was Jonah in this process? Inside the fish. Nope. 
he says he was in the grave. He says he was in the grave. Come on now. You think you're just in a situation? Maybe it's the fact that you're in a grave and you have to cry out to be swallowed up with resurrection power. Yes. You're missing it. Where are you? Oh, I'm in a difficult financial situation. No, you're not. You're in the grave. It's where you need to be. That was the gift from God to put you there in the first place. Yeah. To quit thinking that this is about your strength, what you can accomplish, rather than his resurrection power working through you every day. Yeah. See, you thought you were in a fish, didn't you? The reason that Jonah was able to walk in resurrection power was that he understood it wasn't a fish. It was the grave. Come and on. so he called out to the temple of the Lord. Come on, man. He raised his voice and he was heard by his God because he knew where to put his hope and trust. I'm going to tell you something, church. To be swallowed up in resurrection power is the message. That is what we're supposed yeah. to walk in. That yeah. is what we're supposed to be overwhelmed with. That is what we're supposed to be sharing. Every time you go out and witness to somebody, aren't you really saying, you're in death, but I got some life for you. Yes. You can be resurrected from the dead. Why? Because I'm resurrected every single day. Yeah. Put up this slide for me, oh, Natalie. God. Come on, somebody say resurrection. Resurrection. you got to get swallowed up in the resurrection. Look what the men in the book of Acts did. In Acts 4, 2, they were proclaiming Jesus, in Jesus, the resurrection of the dead. Yeah. By the time you get to the Areopagus, you get them speaking about Jesus and the resurrection. Acts 17, 32, when they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but some of them wanted to hear more. By the time you get to Acts 23, Paul is before the Sanhedrin and he stands up and says, you want to know why I'm in trouble? You think I'm in trial? He's like, I'm, I'm here because of the resurrection of the dead. He goes on and is before Felix in Acts 24. And what is he speaking about yet again? A resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. He's speaking about the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection. The resurrection. Yes, there's only one message that you got. There's only one message that you need. The one that brings you from death to life. Turn with me to Acts chapter 5 and let's look at this one more step here. One step further. Somebody say swallowed up when you get there. Acts 5 and we're going to start in verse 19. Can you feel what God is doing here in our midst? Yeah. Can you feel it? He's trying to bring you from death to life. Amen. He's trying to bring you out of the situation that you're in because it's a grave unless you get his help. Your pride is a grave, church. Yeah. Your fear is a grave. Come on. The only way out of it it's for you to have His resurrection power cause you to stand up on your feet. That's what He's bringing to us today. Fear. Pride. And you got to get rid of that. And this is how we're going to do it. Look at how the men in Acts did it. Acts 5.19 But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go! Stand in the temple courts and tell all the people the full message, somebody say full gospel, full gospel, of this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts as they had been told and began to teach the people. Jealousy had put them in jail. That's what the word says. The leaders of their time were jealous of these men, so they put them in jail. Unjust, unfair, unrighteous, and there they are in jail. But see, the angel of the Lord reminded them of their original standard that needed to be extraordinarily expanded. The original instructions that they were given. Do we let a little thing like prison keep us from what the Lord told us? No. Yeah, see, that was the kind of answer I expected. Because we all know that it shouldn't. Does a headache keep you from fulfilling God's word? No. Do your kids getting sick? derail you from what God spoke to you? Let's be more honest. Those are the easy ones. Yeah. That's the low-hanging fruit. 
do distractions in your life keep you from doing what God said? Does fear in your life keep you from doing what God said? These men were undeterred. Yeah. They, it was about the, the word from the angel said, you got to go and tell the people. Somebody say, tell the people. Tell the people. See, you keep thinking that your circumstances are about you. You keep thinking that it's about you. And so that's the whole problem. Yeah. Is he's given you resurrection power for you to go tell the people. Who are the people that you need to be telling about your testimony, walking in it, living in it, letting His power fill you every day so they could see it in you? It's not about how well you speak. It's about how well you can let the resurrection power of God be at work in your life. Yes. Afraid of how you speak. Or prideful about how you speak. It's the same grave that you got to get out of. You gotta have the full message. You gotta have the full gospel. And what is the message? It's the resurrection power. There's no place for fear. There's no place for pride. Let's look down a few verses and look at verse 29. Verse 29 in the same passage. It says, Peter and the other apostles replied. It's not just one man doing this. It's a whole group of them. They understood how to work in a team. They understood how to work as a family. We must obey God rather than men. You don't hear any fear in their words. You don't hear any pride in their words. All you hear is confidence that comes from being swallowed up in resurrection power. What full message did they share, I wonder? I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> verse 30, the very next verse. Listen to the message. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead. There's the message. You got bondage going on in your life. You got things that has been with you for a long time. It's time to have the God of our fathers who raised Jesus from the dead, raise you from the dead in that area. Whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit. What an interesting way to say that. We are witnesses, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey Him. Did He need to say that the Holy Spirit was a witness? Or was He trying to get at, you guys could have the Holy Spirit if you would just obey Him? Of course the Holy Spirit was witnessing these things. <laughs> of course God was looking at Him. He was trying to get out of different messages. This man is saying, we are witnesses, so is the Spirit of God. Yeah. God gives His Spirit. He gives His resurrection power to those who will obey. Don't let fear pollute this point in your mind. Those who obey are given the Spirit. Those who obey are given the resurrection power that they need. Don't you let something else come in your mind and says, yeah, He may do it for someone else, but not for me and not in this situation. If you obey His words, if you go back to the original standard and you understand that He's trying to expand Amen. it in your life, He will give you what you need. Amen. Most of our lack of action is, in, is wrapped up in fear and a distrust in the Lord Himself. Oh, I don't distrust the Lord. Sure you do when you distrust the church that God puts you in. The result is, as these men left, they all wanted to kill them. They heard this message. They said, the Holy Spirit could come to you if you obey. And the response of the men there was, okay, that's it. We're going to kill you. But they still had no fear. Come on. They still didn't back down. They had already been swallowed up. What are you going to do to me? I've already died. I've been brought back yes. to life. What's the worst you got? Kill me? Ha! Been there. Done that. <laughs> Conquered that. Here I stand before you. A poor man hears no threats. A dead man has no fear. You've got to understand what's going on here. Because these men have been swallowed up in resurrection power. Look at verse 41. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy to suffer for the name. My God, look at that verse 42. Day after day. Isn't that the trick? We can have a single day where we're like, man, I walked in resurrection power today. But is it the key to go day after day? Yeah. Day after day. Whether they were in the temple courts or from house to house, they never 
stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Come on, day after day. Somebody say it with me. Say day after day. Day after day. Say it again. Day after day. Say it again. Day after day. Day after day, we have to be swallowed up in resurrection power. Day after day, we have to get rid of fear and walk in confidence. Day after day, we've got to have that power at work in our lives. Come on, turn to Hebrews chapter 2. And say, swell it up whenever you get there. We'll look at verse 14. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy, swallow up him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. So let's break this down. Jesus was swallowed up into our humanity. He then was swallowed up into death so that he could destroy or swallow up the devil and bring us freedom and resurrection power. We're sitting here tonight having been those who have experienced his resurrection power inside of us. But did you hear what pastor said in the previous scriptures? Day after day. Oh, it's not about just one day being resurrected. It's not about two days being resurrected. It's about day after day being resurrected. Come on, those of you above the age of 40, you know what this is like. Every morning when you get out of bed, it's resurrection power that puts your feet on the floor. That's true. Every time I tie my shoes and got to stand back up, that's resurrection power lifting me up from the grave. Now, verse 15. And free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Come on, man. All their lives. The level of freedom that lies within resurrection power is to be completely free of what has held you in bondage all of your life. Let me put this in, in a very current situation. What we have is a pandemic around us. It's a pandemic of fear. It's a pandemic of fear that has actually just been a catalyst. And this is what I mean. A catalyst accelerates a reaction between two other items. And it brings to the surface a product that otherwise may have taken a very long time to come to the surface. That what COVID has done is acted as a catalyst to bring to the surface everyone's secret and hidden fears for their own life. How much that they have feared death. And really, it shows how much they have loved their own lives. Is COVID real? Yes. But what else is real? Resurrection power is real. I've experienced it day after day after day. What's, what fear have you been slave to all of your life? What catalyst does God have to keep introducing into your life to bring it to the surface so that you have to come face to face with that fear and actually deal with it? Let me give you a quick example. You really have something against a brother? Mm. The brother finally makes a mistake in front of you, and now you're unable to leash, unleash what you really thought about your brother the whole time because now you have a catalyst. You have the excuse to go ahead and give full vent to your anger, wow. which the Bible calls you being a fool. It is. See, it was in there the whole time. You were just too prideful to say that that was really there. But now that you have an excuse, I used to have a pathway to work. And I had to cross a railway to get to work. If I was already late, you know what my favorite thing in the world that happened was when the train came. Because then I had an excuse for what I had already messed up on. Oh, well, the train wow. came. How could I have possibly what? made it on time? It's not my fault. It's the train's fault. And boy, did I feel good about myself. Mm. Boy, that kind of scratched an itch that I couldn't quite get to in another way. The truth is, is it was me. It was my character issue. It was my heart. It was my lying to someone else to make myself look better. Do you have a catalyst that's working on you tonight? 
You got something else. You got some other underlying things. And you're looking for the excuse to say, see, I was right. I was right the whole time. That's not sin. I was right about it. You be careful about that. You be careful about that. I'm not saying that as a generic warning. I'm saying to you. Look at me, church. You be careful about what I'm saying. You, be careful about having excuses to allow your sin to come to the surface. And it was there the whole time. You're just happy to blame it on somebody else. You're happy to blame it on something else. That's not being swallowed up in resurrection power. No. That's going to put you in the grave. You guys are familiar with the term gunny sacking? Where you store away a small offense with a small offense. I'm talking about every type of relationship that's in this room. Husbands, wives, brothers, sisters, friends, family. You begin to store that away long enough. And that gunny sack becomes a, a dump truck load of stored offenses. And it's waiting to unload on that other person. Let me tell you something. When it does, when you have that carnal action in response of some slight justification, it's actually drowning you. That offense is swallowing you up. And it is robbing you of resurrection power. It is robbing you of confidence. It's like the unmerciful servant who is forgiven of enormous amount of debt and goes and chokes his brother and demands payment for something that is fractional in comparison. Be sure that you're not gunny sacking and arming your sinful nature with the strength and desire to choke another brother out. Instead, empty it. Empty it before God. Repent of it. Clothe yourself with humility so that resurrection power can begin to fill you and overcome death with life. You see, it's only through Jesus that we can be free from the fear of death. See, he came to set the captives free. He came to set you and me free from the fear of death. It's only through Jesus that we can be swallowed up in resurrection power. I mean, swallowed up into his divine nature, that very nature that has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Do you hear me, husband? His divine nature has given you everything you need for godliness. Life and godliness. Ladies, do you hear me? You lack no good thing because God's divine nature, through the power of His resurrection, has swallowed up your carnal nature. You have everything you need at your disposal. More than going to Michael's. Or Hobby Lobby. And it's only through Jesus that we can be full of confidence. That confidence that is able to enter into the holy of holies. That one place that only high priests in the past could go to. But we can stand right next to the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Jesus and his blood and his resurrection power. And stand confidently before God at the Ark of the Covenant. And when we do... We take that confidence in resurrection power and we go to the nations. I go to my neighbor. I go to the next person that I encounter in a, a grocery store. And I want them to see the resurrection power that has swallowed me. And I can share with them this hope that I have. Church, do you see that scripture on the screen? And free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Don't put this for the unsaved. Don't put this for the lost out there. Put this for you. To be freed from those that you've been held captive your whole life. It's been like slavery and you just don't know it because you grew up in it your whole life. It feels normal to you, but it's slavery. It's slavery to fear. It's slavery to the fear of death. We're saying you don't have to be afraid of death today because we have the resurrection power. You've got to understand what God is trying to speak to us right now. You've got to understand what's going on in your own heart. You've got to understand what the Spirit is expressing to you. 
Turn with us to Revelation chapter 21. Say swallowed up when you get there. What does it look like for those who have been slaves all their life to the fear of death to be liberated? To be freed from that. Exodus 14, Moses is saying to the people, look at these Egyptians. The enemies that you see today, you're not going to see them anymore. At what point can we just finally be done with some of our enemies? We're not going to get rid of all of them yet, but we're going to get rid of some tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. What are we talking about? We're talking about a resurrection power that even resurrects the earth that we're on, that resurrects the heavens. I saw, verse 2, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. You want to talk about being swallowed up. From Out of heaven from God, prepared as a beautiful bride, dressed not for anyone else, but especially dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God has swallowed up where the men are, and God is with men. And He will live with them. They will be His people. God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. There will be no more mourning. There will be no more crying or pain for the old order has been swallowed up in the new. Come on. This is the ultimate expression of heaven swallowing up earth, of the kingdom that is above engulfing and enveloping the earth. Amen. Silliness c- comes from our doctrine when we forget this. The faithlessness of walking in fear. Look at me. The faithlessness of walking in fear when you have the same resurrection power that can be available to you today and every day that's going to transform the entirety of creation. What do you need to be afraid of? The obstinance of harboring pride. Man, that's got to be swallowed up tonight in this kind of resurrection power. It says now the dwelling of God is with men. Now, there is a now that's coming. But we've got to be free from our fear and pride. We've got to be swallowed up in the resurrection power. And you have to walk in full confidence because you are walking in His power. Somebody say swallowed up. up. What we just read in Revelation 21 was prophesied about long before that book was written. Let me read this to you out of Isaiah 25, verse 7 and 8. On this mountain, He will destroy... The shroud that enfolds all peoples. The sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all the faces. Don't you remember reading that in Revelation 21? He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. What God is trying to instill in our hearts is that we can be free from fear. We can be swallowed up in resurrection power. We can be full of confidence to walk before him at the same promise that is made in Isaiah, the same promise that will be fulfilled as Revelation 21 says so, is daily filled within our hearts and minds. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 54 says this, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable. Somebody say when. When? The inevitability of this occurring, the inevitability of all of us getting to see with our natural eyes a resurrection power envelop us, and the, with the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Then you can even taunt death at that point. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Come on. Yeah. Come on, that sounds like somebody who's so eliminated fear and is walking in resurrection power, yes. has been swallowed up in it. Death, what you got? <laughs> Where's your victory? Yeah. Oh, you think death is a sting? At some point, this resurrection power, we get to in, in, be engulfed in it. Yeah. See, those in the cloud of witnesses already know what this is like. Yeah. But so do we in this room. We get it in parts each and every day. We got to walk in it. We got to walk in it. We got to keep walking in it. Why? Because even death will be swallowed up in this resurrection power. How many of you need resurrection power today? Everybody turn with us to our last scripture for the evening in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. Look at 
Look, family. We've got to move the concepts of resurrection power into our daily lives. Day by day. Oh, pastor, I got resurrection power. But you're being dominated by fear. Come on. Pastor, man, that was a good message. I am walking it. It's so good. I've been swallowed up by resurrection power. But you're walking in pride. See, you can get to the point where you can learn how to say, you learn the right kind of speech patterns to have. You learn to say amen at just the right spots. But what we're wanting for you as your pastors, as family with you, is we are wanting you to be swallowed up in the resurrection power. There's none of you that's left. We can't even find you anymore. Where did David go? I don't know because all I see is resurrection power walking around. How is that going to be the case? 2 Corinthians 5 is going to give us a glimpse. Come on. Verse 1, now we know. That sound like confidence to you? Yeah. Yeah. Now we know. Yeah. I know exactly what this is like. That if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, <laughs> there's death. There's the grave. We have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan. Lord, we really are longing to be clothed, clothed with that heavenly dwelling place. Yeah. God, my body can't do it right now, but I'm longing to be clothed with that supernatural power. Yes, one day. Yes, sometime in the future. But today, i got to tell you, I've got a longing I've got a groaning on the inside of me that says, I've got to have His resurrection power, and I've got to have it right now. Yeah. I can't allow fear to be there that I've called something else because I've been a slave to it my whole life. Come on. I can't let pride be there because I called it something else. Because it's such a friend, I can't even get rid of it. I can't even hardly acknowledge it. God, I'm longing... I'm groaning on the inside for something of the heavens to come and clothe me. Because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. Amen. For while we are in this tent, we groan. We're burdened. We're fearful. We're prideful. But we do not wish to be unclothed by those things but to be clothed, not with those temporal, mortal, perishable. We long to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. Amen. So that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Somebody say life. Life. We can't keep walking around with death. We can't keep walking around in the grave and saying it's something. I am longing to have this mortality swallowed up by life. Do you know why? Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose. What very purpose? That you would be swallowed up by resurrection power. That it would look in your life that those difficulties that you have, that that shalom that needs to get there, husbands and wives, that that training of the disciples in your home, of that breaking free of chains that needs to be upon you, that you will have what you are, this tent swallowed up by His Amen. resurrection power. Amen. Now it is God who has made you for this very purpose. Yes, <laughs> He's even given you His Spirit as a promise, yep. as a deposit, guaranteeing, somebody say guarantee, guarantee, that you can be free from your fear, you can be free from your pride, that you can actually be swallowed up like a loving father grabbing a small child and enveloping them with his arms and his strength and his power saying, this is what you were made for, I've got you, I'm going to swallow you with my power. And then you can walk in that day by day by day by day. Not just on a Sunday, not just on a Wednesday, but every day Amen. that you've got to walk in it. Amen. Quit accepting something less. Quit accepting something else. 
It just shows that you've been a slave to that your whole life. But it's time for us to be freed from our watery grave and find the resurrection power tonight. Stand to your feet with us. Church, repentance is the foundation of being swallowed up in resurrection power. Now is the time to come to this altar. Now is the time to deal with your fear. Hear this altar. Let it be swallowed up by resurrection power. Now is the time to let pride be swallowed up by resurrection power. So you can stand up and have full confidence before God. Mighty God, Lord, we surrender, submit, lay at your feet every ounce of our lives. Lord, help us. Help us deal with your fear. We deal with our fear. Or that lifelong slavery of again and again being subject to it. May it be broken tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, our hearts cry like Jonah's heart cry. Lord, let your resurrection power swallow us. Lord, may we see you in your holy temple. Raise us from the grave tonight. Lord, raise us from the grave and cut off every ounce of pride, every ounce of fear. May we walk confidently before you by your blood, through your Son, and empowered by your Spirit. In Jesus' name.